Welcome back to the Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. How you doing, Steve? Good. How are you? Not bad. I guess I should say I'm doing well. I'm doing well, kind sir. That's the proper response to that question. Yeah. What's but I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good? <laughs> How's your kidney stone issue? Eh, it's a little better this morning. Get another one there, you know. I felt like it, but right now there's no pain, there's no agitation. But yesterday, kind of, I don't know, it must have been moving a little bit, or the, maybe it broke out. The one I passed last week broke off from a bigger one or something. <sighs> I don't know. It's not fun. I feel bad for you. I yeah. Ah. Yeah. If I go out and jog, it might jar it loose some more. I was playing a video game one time on the old Xbox where it has the camera that they spy on you in your living room, allegedly. Anyway, I jumped down, I jumped doing one of the things, and as soon as I landed, it jarred one loose, and so I like hit the floor and then continued over onto my face. It hurt so bad. Like I mean, immediately I knew exactly what had happened. It's crazy. But, you know, I don't get them like that anymore like I used to, so I don't really have that much stress and pressure in my life. Good thing. Damn. But, you know, this could have been caused by the dehydration because it's been really hot out there working on the garden for six hours. Yeah, I get, I'll get i get dehydrated and my calves will get really tight and my foot will start to hurt. Um, it just seems like that's what causes it. Andrew's like, I think it's gout, but which I don't know, it's weird because uh, Nikki prescribed me prednisone, which, because Andrew had some gout pills I took, which it's weird because it, it does work, but it works for inflammation. So, and then Nikki's like, oh, I probably shouldn't take those because my kidneys, like, because it's like a super NSAID, which isn't good for my kidneys. So she gave me the prednisone, which seems to work well. And But it's weird because that's why I'm kind of the gout thing. I'm like, yeah, but when I don't drink a lot, like, it's been really hot, like, the last two weeks, really. So if I get dehydrated, I can, tar- yeah, I can start to feel it, like, oh, my foot's going to start to hurt or my calves are really tight or whatever. So, um it's weird the things that cause issues with our body that you wouldn't necessarily think. Like yours, you're, de- you're not drinking enough, and now you get a kidney stone. And me, I'm not drinking enough, and my calves are they'll get tight, and then my foot will start hurting, and then you'll see me hobbling around for a couple of days. Luckily, the prednisone seems to work. But yeah, I think stress is a big inducer of mine. Uh, it was yeah. when I was younger. Like stress causes all kinds of issues. Yeah, because once yeah. I retired, and I've had no stress in my life really since then. I've only had a few where I used to get, like, I mean, I, I carried around a jar at one point. I passed so many. I would have, like, surgery, and then two weeks later, more stones ready for surgery. Man. It's crazy. I'm going to get you a shirt that says, uh, I rate, make rocks. I do. <laughs> it's a true story. I showed it to you, so now you know what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. I, yeah, I don't know how you do it. So what did you do yesterday? Nothing. I mean, it rained until, what, one? Yeah. It was pretty rainy, and then... Uh, I just kind of took it easy. So after I left here, I was like, <sighs> go to the Red Sox game? Not go to the Red Sox game. Kept checking the weather down there, you know, and, like, four tickets are expensive, so it's a lot of money just to not go. And then, but I also don't want to sit there and get rained out or because that's four hours of driving that i don't need to do and so it was like this back yeah, it's and 100 forth. bucks in gas almost it, yeah i mean i took the mini cooper which was really great because oh. that thing doesn't use hardly any gas but so uh about three thirty, so i like took a nap in the afternoon and then i was like okay so I woke up checked the phone i was like all right we're just gonna we're gonna go so uh lydia and her friend Paige went and then i took her uncle fred again and um went down and luckily thank you to ann page's mom she had ponchos so we're gonna stop and get some but so uh just in case i, I don't want to sit there and get like soaking wet I just, that's not fun and so we uh finally started down like i was like well i want to wash the car because the car was really dirty so i went through the car wash over in t-bird and uh because i got gas which was pretty cool because that thing doesn't use much gas at all i went all the way to boston and back and it took like two little bars on the gauge of like eight bars or whatever, where if I took my truck, it would have been one hundred fifty dollars probably in fuel. I don't know; it's like stupid expensive. But so we went down, and uh, of course, watched the temperature gauge. We hit rain in like 
Manchester-ish area, and uh, you could just watch the temperature, and we got to Boston, and it was 91. I was like, whoa, it was just hot and, like, sticky. And we sit there, and then in the third inning, it started to rain, and they pull the tarp over, and I'm like, oh. And so we had our ponchos, though, and I, we just sat in our seats. Now our seats aren't wet like everyone else's that ran for cover, so we're sitting there with our – and it made me rain 15 minutes so. And then, obviously, you know, take the tarp off the field and all that process. And uh, then at the very end of the game, it started to rain again. But they managed to just get the, the ninth inning done. And they actually won 3-1, to one, surprisingly. But Cleveland had this one pitcher. Oh, it was pissing me off. He literally – this he is a classic example of why there needs to be a pitch clock that they're supposedly going to have next year because he, like – step off the mound, pick up the bag. He just like wasting time. Wait, like he was like, it's almost like he was wasting time to wait for another pitcher, even though there wasn't another pitcher coming. He actually pitched pretty well. So I couldn't even like say He's probably getting in their head psychologically. Something. And then it was funny because uh, Vasquez was up and he'd just done all this stuff. You know, he waited and people are counting and booing him. And so then Vasquez, okay. Steps out. He's ready to pitch now, and Vasquez steps out of the box and takes time. But yeah, no home runs last night. But three to one, they actually won a game. They've been they've been losing bad. But I actually bought a. It seems like every time I go to a Red Sox game, I buy tickets for another game. But for August fourteenth, just for me and Andrea to go, um, it's a Yankee game on a Sunday night, which should be really fun. I've never been to a Yankee game, and I, those are always fun. And so it's. Um, same side of the field, just down a few more boxes, but uh, actually just a couple of rows closer. So they weren't, they weren't badly priced for two. When you buy four, it's usually you know it's like it's kind of expensive. But um, so I'm excited. That'll be that'll be fun. Even though I'm sure the Yankees will destroy them, but it's funny because some games they've gotten destroyed by the Yankees. Some games they've beat the Yankees, and then there's games like earlier was it Friday night's game or Saturday's game? Toronto beat them. 28 to 5. Like, I think a T ball team could have won the better. the third baseman pitching? Uh, you don't know. Uh, it was sad and embarrassing. That's the worst they've ever lost. The most runs ever scored on them, I guess. Like, crazy. That's weird. Yeah. So I got some pitches I'll, I'll stick up here at the end of the show of uh, us down there. But this is a good picture of us in our ponchos. But then the girls at the end of the night managed to get on the the screen, and I got a picture of that. So, uh, well, we've been to what four games? I think four games this year. Trying to get on the screen, now I'm getting on the screen at all, not once. And then the girls managed to get on last night, which is kind of cool. So, um, it was it was a fun night though overall. I said it rained that little bit, but so thankful of the ponchos. Now, if we we're back like another three or four rows, I think it would have just been under the roof. It wouldn't have mattered if it rained, but so everyone's like running up to get under the roof and we're just sitting there in our ponchos like yeah whatever felt kind of good and then it was so crazy coming back um luckily no traffic on the way back no construction because that's been the last two times i've gone down at construction because with the delay like i didn't go home till one o'clock last night and um i was like please don't have like construction over but i watched the temperature left boston it was probably like 81 At the time i got to newport it was like 63 i think it was like because the windows are down. There's no AC. There's the other problem. No AC in the Mini Cooper. It's so like I tried to recharge thing. It doesn't work. So something else, and I just haven't fixed it. So the only thing that has AC is my white truck, which Andrew has been driving because it has AC. And uh, but it was funny once we got to Concordish, I'd say, I had to like roll the windows up some because like hey, it's like it's. And then this morning when I was outside, I'm like, it feels a lot nicer. Yeah, I, I had the doors open last night till because I didn't think it three was, in the morning when I. Because everyone's like, oh, the t you know the temperature is going to drop after the storm comes through, and I'm like, really? Because I'm like in Boston, it's 91, it's hotter than ever, and then finally get up here, and I was like, oh, okay, so maybe it will drop. Because I'd be really happy if it was to. Yeah, it's nice going to get back down to the 50s and yeah. low 60s the next week or so. It looks like. Yeah, that I don't mind 80s. I just the humidity sometimes, and then just the when it's 90 and you have to work outside. I don't mind a. The heat, if it's partly cloudy and no humidity. Yes. I can work in heat. Yeah. I just can't yep. stand the sun blazing the down. The sun on blazing me. down on you, or if it's so sticky out there. That or it's there's like, biting flies out. 
Like yeah. that that deters me more than heat or cold. Yeah, because that's the most miserable experience yeah, ever. Getting, like I have a big gigantic knot just from taking the dog out this morning. I got bit by one. It's crazy. It's funny how much we complain about the weather and how we want it, everything just be perfect the way we want it. But uh, yeah, because when it's hot out, eventually you just get soaking nasty wet and sweat and it's like yeah and yeah, once you get important. to that point it's yeah. it's over you know what i mean you're yeah. over it by that point and exactly the only thing that bothers me again is getting bit by mosquitoes or flies yeah that's that's not fun um yeah friday I had a close call i was like was that close to falling off the ladder i had it up too straight and i was towards the top of it so like eight feet up and i don't know what exactly happened but Luckily, if I had fallen straight back, there was stuff behind me that I could have landed on that would have been very bad, very, very bad. But I got I got lucky and caught myself. And so then I was kind of like, you know, it's almost time to head home for the day and not keep pushing myself. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of heights, but, I mean, I've bungee jumped. and You bungee jumped? Yeah, to try to get over my fear of heights. That didn't do it, did it? Uh, I mean, I still, I can get a little woozy, like, on the, if I'm up on the, top of my roof but like just getting up on the ladder even if the ladder fell getting on the lower portion it's funny some stuff i'm not like, too worried about that but whenever i get up high enough yeah like i i don't I, it's weird i'm, I'm guessing weird like that because like i go get on your roof and be fine um but if you were to like i don't know say let's go skydiving now if you tell me we're gonna crash the plane's going down I'm the first one out the door, no problem. But if we went and we were just like, all right, we're going to go skydiving, I just, I don't know if I could do it. If the chute was open when I came out, I don't think that would bother me. It's the the free fall that, hmm, is the chute really going to open or am I going to hit the ground at 125 miles per hour? That's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't do the bungee jumping though. So kudos to you for that because I, I guess I get on your roof, I, ladders don't, bother me for certain heights but then i've been up on like a five-story building and look over the edge and like kind of freak out like i nah i don't like that at all like so i guess for me it's maybe just a certain height and then after that i'm i don't like it it's yeah so crazy. you wouldn't have been in the 82nd airborne no no i mean i guess if you if i did it once and then you're maybe uh, maybe i'd get over it but that first one i mean you'd have to have the guy like Having a, holding the gun to me saying, you don't jump, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> then maybe I would jump. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have a desire to do it at this point in my life. I, I, I Actually, I was supposed to go to airborne school when I was in the military, but my kidneys, I failed the physical before I was supposed to go. Do we even it was use... like a reward I got back in the day for being doing something well. And my boss was like, hey, we got a slot. We'll send you. Do we even use that? I was airport? rewarded by getting sent to a whatever it is, month long course of jumping out of a plane, but I didn't end up getting to go because of my kidneys. That didn't sound like a reward. Do we even use that airborne anymore? Do we jump out of planes or anything anymore? Yeah. One of our commenters, if he's watching this, will probably let you know exactly. Yeah. He's all about airborne. I know people in the airborne. That's what stuff, AATW but. means, what he put on his comment airborne all the way. So he'll watch this and laugh at us and be like, ah, oh, it's fun, it's exhilarating. I mean, he still does it even though he's retired. He still goes and jumps out of planes when he gets the opportunity. I guess it's probably a rush once you do it and you realize yeah. that you're going to live for the most part. You know, I mean, there's odds that the chute's not going to open because somebody packed it wrong or whatever. And they say that the static type's more, more actually more dangerous than the free fall. I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, I've heard that. If you're wrong, he'll let us know in the comments if he watches the show. Perfect. I plan on staying right on the old ground here. Like, I mean, I fly, like, flown places. And I'm not scared of flying. I like flying. I'm scared when the plane does crazy, weird stuff. Like, I had this one flight from Houston back, and we were going over, uh, we are going over, like, Ohio. It wasn't thunderstorms. Like, I didn't see thunder, but it was really bumpy for probably a half hour or so. And, like, I was, people were looking at me, like, that I was flying with, like, well, hey, you know, look at Tim, and he'll make us feel safe. And I was like, you're not. So I was freaking terrified. I'm like, So I asked the flight attendant when we landed. I'm like, hey, out of, you know, 1 to 10, how bad was that? 10, the worst, you know. Oh, it was probably about a 3. And I was like, 
I was a three, which made me feel better though. Cause I'm like, all right, this plane could go through a hell of a lot more before I need to panic, you know, cause I don't like that whole bumpy out of control feeling, which is weird. Cause I race and it doesn't bother me. And I've wrecked many times racing and stuff and you're out of control, but like, I don't know. When we, we flew to Montana, it was out of control. And they didn't even come on once and make an announcement. Like, and Zeta and I are, you know, like, like I said, I, even though I'm scared of heights, I bungee jumped. I, I, I like, you know, I'm not scared to try things like that. You know what I mean? And so, and Zeta and I love roller coasters. We love the, the rush of that kind of danger. And both of us just looked at each other. <laughs> we were like, what the heck is going on? Like, we both just had the look. We didn't really say much, but we were like, this is not, does not seem right. And they never came on and said, we're experiencing technical difficulties or, you know, whatever. Like, there was like nothing, eh, talk good. but like we were, Pilot it, was, it was all I pictured was <laughs> that, that horrible movie I saw based on a true story where like the top of the plane came off and they were flying out to Hawaii. Do you remember that when that happened? And like somebody was sucked out the top. Like that's always my biggest oh, movie. Well, I think oh, it, it really happened, happened in real life. Oh. It was based on real life, but there was a movie. on. I've it. seen all those like movies and stuff when it happens and like people shoot out the door the thing yeah it sucks them out like that <laughs> freaks me out or i've also seen like but you know what i mean it was like rattling i mean it yes was, it was it was one of those ones where we just kind of looked at each other and we both kind of opened our eyes and we're like well we're having fun <laughs> we're going to montana i mean you think about <laughs> that like it moves in the air it doesn't really move as much as it feels like it does because there's no point that's not moving to compare to but um I mean, the plane's obviously made for all that stuff but it just you know i mean there's thousands of car accidents a day and i never get in the car and think about moving a car accident the second you get in that plane there's like you know one plane crash well, you've given up like, all your trust to the pilot yes and the, if i was flying it i think it'd be different the mechanics that work on it all the unsung heroes that are making sure that it's pretty safe have you noticed though one thing not that it, anything positive that's like come out of 9-11 but i feel like ever since 9-11 they got really really uh strict with their rules as far as like maintenance and everything because i feel like before that plane crashes were more often happening See, i don't know if it was 9-11 there were a couple of plane crashes right after 9-11 weren't there i think there were i don't remember maybe i just felt like maybe that but uh, yeah, stricter. Uh, like we uh, weren't letting things go like maybe we normally would. Uh, yeah, I always think about those things. And like, I've had a pilot I got on the plane once, and then they said there's an issue. Maintenance come in, looked at it, and she, the pilot. There was a woman pilot. And she's like, "No, I'm not happy with it. We're switching planes." Which I was like, "A, thank God that happened when we we're on the ground, and B, thank God for her." And she's like, "No, I'm not flying this. Like, we're gonna get in a different plane because." You know, some pilots might be like, eh, be all right, screw it. You know, I'm having a bad day today, so whatever. <laughs> no. Uh, no. But, you know, you put your trust in other people's hands. That's a... Big time. I mean, what, a million components in a plane? I don't know. Yeah, lots. A lot. Lots of uh, technical stuff, uh, software-related stuff, computer stuff. Like, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, when you think about it. It is great. Yeah, it is great. When are you flying again? <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's your next trip? I think I'll drive. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, I, like I said, I like flying. Like, I was scared at first, and then I've flown a ton of times. Probably the scarier flights, even though it was a nice, one of the nicest flights I've ever had, as smooth as when I flew to Barcelona. Because if you're over the ocean, you're four hours from land in any direction or whatever, like, if something happens, there's no emergency landing. It's going to be in the ocean, and you might as well just forget that. Like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the ocean either. No, I'm not me either. Like, I'm about ankle deep in water. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. When we lived in Hawaii. I went out and yeah, Hawaii. That's good. Did like cool. the. I didn't surf the last time we were there. When I went and visited my brother when he was stationed there, I, I surfed. But there, I just did what body boards or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of fun, but still, it's deep enough to where you can get eaten. But it, like, it takes a while for me to warm up. I got to make sure there's a big crowd out there. You worried about sharks? Yeah, I just it's not our natural element. It's not mine anyway. Like Nikki's like a fish out of water. She loves swimming and yeah, you, you know, my daughter Michaela the same way. Like, you put her in water, and it was like a second home. It was just 
Yeah. Like, like, a I, fish. I, like Seriously crazy. Like if we were to trace back our DNA and our ancestry, Nikki probably grew up. Her ancestors were like on the water, and I was probably up in the mountains. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean. Like a well, stream with some trout is like. Well, as a kid, we never went swimming and stuff. Like yeah, a little bit, but not like some people went a lot. Like my kids go a lot, so they're not as timid of the water. Where me as a kid didn't. So you know, and I like deep sea fishing, but. This last experience I had, I was like, I can't do it again. Yeah, I was so sick. Like, I get seasick. I know I get seasick. But the last time I tried just to use Dramamine and not the patch that the doctor gives me, which I've used those on cruises, which the ship barely moves on a cruise. I mean, so I got to the point with those, I didn't even use it because I'm like, I'm good. I feel like I'm getting used to it. But this, it was a horrible, horrible experience. And you're trapped. And that's some of it too in your mind, I think, is like, there's no getting back. I was like sick to the point where I was like, man, if I just fake a heart attack, Coast Guard will come get me right now. <laughs> I can go back, <laughs> even if I have to pay for it all. Was that it, bad? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like everyone was getting sick. It's just once you start getting seasick, it was just, I hate being seasick. It's the worst thing. And uh, yeah, I, no. I went up deep sea fishing a couple times. I didn't get sick. That's why I think it's all a state of mind. So there's certain things in life to where I'm like, if you just tell yourself, I'm, I'm big on tell you psychosomatic. What, once you get out there seasick, you can tell yourself all day long that it's all in your head. It's not going to do a damn bit of good. I tried everything. <laughs> and I stayed outside and water was coming over the side of the boat and I was getting soaked. And it was like cold too because I went inside. It was worse. Like it, it was, it was horrible. Like, But I don't, I don't go on like. I've been on a few roller coasters, but I don't like if we go to Universal. Like I'm there just to watch and check. I don't go on rides because it makes me sick, and I don't know why. I can race in a circle, no problem, none, zero. But you put me on, you know, any ride that goes upside down or anything. Nope. Let's see. That's one of my best memories or favorite memories with Zeta was the first time I took her on a big roller coaster. It was a Screaming Eagle. Six Flags, St. Louis. I'll never forget that. The way that she was screaming, and then by the end, she was laughing so hard. It was like a full body laugh and enjoyment. And then I was too, because I could see it was just one of those memories to where I just, I'll cherish that until I, I, I wish stop I stopped breathing, I guess. Like that stuff. But like, like the girls that went to the carnival thing, we went to the carnival thing there. It was running there in June. Zeta said those rides were kind of rough. Yeah, they're rough. First of Z- all, Zeta was like, "Those are not normal rides." Because even Zeta, who yes, they're not, has the Morris thrill. Think about she it. She was like, "Those rides were horrible." Those rides. She ended up giving her uh, yeah. bracelet to Lydia. Those rides travel down the road, okay? <laughs> and we all know when things travel down the road, bolts and nuts and vibration. Kind of like when you're on a plane and it's vibrating. You're like, how tight are these? Exactly. You get some quick Except lock they kind of check the plane. They don't really check these, you know, rides. I'm like, sure they do. They're supposed to. They're supposed to be regular maintenance. and Because if there's an accident, they always pull the records and check to see. So they can assign blame. Yeah, but if you're on that ride and there's an accident... Too late by then. Too late by then. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... No. Well, that's kind of also the thrill of it, isn't it? Like, knowing that you're on a carnival ride in a sporting goods parking lot, and you're like, I might die getting on this thing. That's part of the rush, right? That's not part of the rush for you. <laughs> no. I wouldn't put my daughter on the... Uh, Adelina on the little train they had. Because you didn't buckle. There's, like, no buckle on it. And she's I mean, she's only two, and you couldn't, like, I don't know, doll. Yeah, you need to hang out with uh, Nikki more. Why? You going to get upset if somebody hangs their foot over the railing on the second floor of a house? I don't care about any of that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like it. You're worried about a seatbelt on a train made for kids. There's not a seatbelt on, like, the minecart rides at most things. I mean, this there's is, a bar that comes down. This is my two-year-old daughter. It's not well, a lady. kind of young. Thank you. But, I mean, like, is it made for two-year-olds? There's probably a height requirement to where they know that, like, if you're below this height, there's the odds are that you're not going to sit where you're supposed to be. Well, there's usually height requirements for a reason. Listen, 
there's one guy that's been sitting out in the parking lot the whole damn day, and I don't have faith that he can hit a button to stop this thing if she was to, like, do something weird. Like, no, I'm good with that. Oh, so it's a trust with her sitting still at that age. Well, that's different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if I knew she was going to sit still. I mean, I didn't take move. Zeta to Carnival or Six Flags until she was, like, She went on, like, little car things, but they buckled, so I knew she wasn't going to, like, get off of it. Jump out. Exactly. The train didn't have that. I'm like, no, I don't feel comfortable. You're not going that. So we went on the other things a bunch of times, but, uh, yeah. Nope. I'm good. Hey, that's responsible parenting. Yeah. That's, yeah. Nope. <laughs> uh, all right. So position of the day, special education teacher. I did notice the English thing disappeared the other day, so I think they might have filled that spot. Um. So that's good. And then uh, I don't have a lot of uh, local stuff. Some of the stuff we've said a million times, so I'm going to uh, wait until later this week to talk more about it because I feel like people have got the hint about most of these things. But but the farmer's market every Friday, 3 to 6. should definitely be getting a lot of produce out there now. Um, I've seen corn and different things from people on Facebook that have come out of the garden. So I was like, oh. of course, my corn's like this tall but you said you're starting to get yeah i already got the silk and some and mine are only three three and a half feet tall so i don't know what's going on with that after driving down the connecticut river valley and seeing those dark green luscious fields of corn that are well if you could go get some of that soil i bet yours will be that yeah that's good soil that's good soil you can't that you can't beat that soil no that's probably like thousands of years of beautiful soil in that river valley area. We could we could compete with that soil if we went and dredged my pond and then brought all the dredging up and mixed it into the garden soil. Nah, no, not that. No, not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get you to get that. We we'll go out there and dredge my pond, man. We'll take that and mix it into the yeah. soil. We'll have the best garden. It's funny. We look at that. I'm doing we. We will <laughs> giving you credit, man. You dredge it, and we can talk about how we have a great garden. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was funny. I saw on Facebook the other day someone, I don't know, maybe the first time I ever had corn, they like, showed a picture of it. I was like, is this normal? Is that silk stuff you're talking about, like where corn starts? <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, it's Yeah, that's how it that's gets the all the water and feeds the corn, <laughs> those little tentacles. Is this like a weed? I'm like, it's not a weed. <laughs> that's... Literally, that's that's attached to every kernel on the cob. Yeah, that's like the good. That's that's good. That's a good thing. You're doing yeah. good. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, sure gets plenty of water. No, I'm excited to see the garden later. See after this rain yesterday. Like, it's, it's weird. You get these spouts of rain, even though like, water everything, but the spouts of rain and the temperature changes and stuff. It tends to like. Yeah, when I lived on, on city water back in the day, and I had a little garden plots or whatever. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's chlorinated and the all the other chemicals that they add to city water, but chlorine, the, well, chlorine and whatever else they add. I'm sure they add more than chlorine, but uh, there's a difference between that water and with that and water and natural rainwater. Yeah, I agree. Like even here, I'm on well water, and I can tell the difference between when I water and when it rains. You know, the water from your. Uh... Well, it's probably too purified. <laughs> it wants, like, that dirty water. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with fishing. Like, when I was a kid, there used to be tons of fish in, the, in there. Was, you know, and now you go fishing, it's like, if it's not stocked, it's, it's not. I mean, you used to catch big suckers and big dace and all that. Like, my grandfather, I swear, he's like, they've cleaned everything up too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you went so far to clean up the environment that you actually hurt some of the environment. Yeah, or the chemicals finally killed everything off because it, you know, altered their genetic code over time, and then they just died off. Maybe. Could be. I'm sure that there's probably something that I read at some point that goes in that direction. You know, like, it just makes sense, too, if you're putting dye in the water. They used to, it's like sewer pipes just go right to the Connecticut River. Oh, no. I, I've yeah. heard stories that like they knew what color they were dyeing the wool because the river would turn. That's true too. That's why for years when I was a kid, my dad's like, "We don't need any fish out of the sugar over there." Since it's changed a ton because obviously door walls closed, but uh, yeah. Well, the 
factory, but there's still a door. The lagoons are still out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Store. Lagoons are still out there that hold this stuff, but um, yeah, since then it's fine. But and I'm not an advocate of yeah, let's just dump the raw sewer into the river because that's disgusting and not yeah, that's gross. okay. But uh, but that's what I used to do. It's pretty crazy. Um, Concert in Common this Sunday is Party Crashers. Pretty cool name. We should go crash the party. And then uh, Claremont on Tuesday, August 2nd, so this a week from today, from 4 to 8 on Pleasant Street, it's doing a national night out Claremont. And uh, they're going to have, uh, sounds like the fire trucks are out there and all that, small carnival, games, prizes, um, music, free food, fun. Fun's usually a good thing. I'm sure Chief will be there. This is his first full week over in Claremont. And, uh, yeah. So if you're interested in that, or you're from Claremont, keep keep an eye out for this. Sounds like a fun event. Kind of like our block party we just had there over the weekend, or Friday. Did you ever get down there? I don't know. No. I didn't get down there, but it was... I drove through, and it was, it was pretty It was good. one of those... Uh, because you weren't going, I went out in the garden, and then I was I asked Nikki to grab me if she wanted to go. We try something to eat, and anyway, she found something, thought it out, and I worked until. She sure what happens? Snow. Like we'll have something like that in town, and then something will come up on my end, and I'm like, man, I really wanted to go to that, you know, because these things don't happen all the time, right? And I was like, nah, all right, well. Well, once I get the. My garden all figured out. Like I told you, next year I'm going to focus on my irrigation system. That'll be my, and then so after that it'll be like clockwork. You know what I mean? Like right now I'm still moving sprinkler heads, and it's because you're cheap. Go get another one. Oh no! I mean it's not just cheap. It's well, I mean part of it is. I have like three of those ones like yours that aren't on tripod that you certainly could use. I, don't know. I if anything, what I need to do is go get another tripod, and then I can do it on both ends. Yeah, I, need I, I mean, I just I need to like design it out so that I can purchase exactly what I want and need. Because if I go buy that, then next year, because that's fifty to seventy five dollars for one of those sprinklers. You know, that's a couple that's the of hoses or whatever. That's the difference between you and me. You think about things, and then you don't waste money. Me, I tend to waste money because i started with those little they're like 13 bucks i'm trying to keep it to where i can remain retired yeah <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> that's true but i started out with those i'm like that nah, i don't like these and i went and got these other two that were like 30 bucks a piece and they work well but as the plants grow though they're not you know so i'm like it's like one of those tripod things like you did which is 50 bucks so i think if i get another one of them they'll cover the whole garden in the gaps but I'm like, well, it's, you know. But see, what you're going to realize, yeah, though, yeah. is with those sprinklers come mid-August, you're going to have a lot of possibly uh, white powdery mildew. Because it's too wet? Or... Yeah. So, like, that's why I try to prune everything so the airflow keeps going through there because that will help prevent it. But, uh, like, zucchini last year, once the white powdery mildew set in, I was, I couldn't get rid of it. Hmm. And then you know, it'll mess up your fruit, vegetables. Could, yeah. I mean, you can trim it off. You know, like I cut the leaves off, and yeah, this the the thing that goes back and forth is a more of a nice soaking ring kind of thing. The tripod thing's more of a, it wets it faster. Yeah, but it which I mean for the front of the garden though, because it's right in the sun, which dry, so it dries out more. Um, but the bottom, like I said before, like I haven't watered it in probably two weeks because it's just, it's just why it's, it's At last year by the end of July and going into August, I didn't even have some water because we had such a good amount of rain, but this year, yeah, this year has been dry, been dry. My yard looks horrible. Nah. I mean, I'm not really too worried about it because I read the same Read same thing I propaganda did. you did that yeah i don't even know this propaganda but i mean we used to use what were we, t- we talked about it after the show but the the weed that everybody's always pulling out dandelion 
like dandelion used to be used for medicinal purposes. You make tea out of it, and now we go yeah, and yeah. treat it like it's a weed. Yep. You can I mean, eat dandelions. You know, My grandpa loves dandelions. But yeah. anyway, you know what I mean? But like just over time, how we've changed, and so now it's all about does my yard look perfect, which I don't really care. Which if, if your yard's perfect, it has no flowering plants for bees, and without bees, we all die because they pollinate everything and everything, you know, like it's important, <laughs> very important. And, uh, yeah, no, I saw that, and it's so true. We've been, like, brainwashed, like, oh, our garden must be perfect and the right height and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, the, the field around the garden, I just mowed walking paths through it the other day instead of trying to mow it all down because I like it whenever it looks like a meadow or a field. With, you you know, should plant some wildflowers out there. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, the, there's the, wildflowers. I'm, they're... They're almost like daisies, but they're not daisies. Maybe they are daisies, but they're all different colors. There's like burnt orange. There's yeah, dark I red. Like I mean, it looks beautiful out there. But like I said, Nikki went out there and scalped my yard up top and then mowed all that. I'm blaming <laughs> her for my my broken, not broken, but my bent blades. She's not going to watch this. Okay. I think she's so many episodes behind by the time she sees this. If she does, try to catch up. You'll be wondering why. why I'll, I'll be out me? there plowing or you know, it'll be snow blowing by then. <laughs> All right. Meme of the day. Uh, Micro from Dirty Jobs. Uh, we're churning out a generation of poorly educated people with no skill, no ambition, no guidance, and no real, realistic expectations of what it means to go to work. Isn't that the truth? Sad but true. Uh Well, just for truth and lending, as we're moving past the, the the meme of the day, going into the where we discuss all the crazy stuff going around. So I read more because I read it right before we went on the show yesterday about the global warming, whatever. So it's a theory that NASA's had for quite a while, which basically says that over thousands of years, the sun affects climate, and that's what leads to the melting of a polar ice caps and all that stuff and so truth in lending it's not they didn't come out with something new saying this it's been around forever and it's a theory and our temperature has increased 0.5 degrees celsius over the last 20 years or whatever so running out by. it's actually last year compared to the la the previous 20 years average together so it's probably not even an accurate mathematical so you're saying estimation if i were to actually dig deeper into it but i mean so it hasn't warmed up that much is what i got from all of it but at the end of the day i want everybody to know that that's a theory that over thousands of years the sun is responsible for major shifts and right right the, which makes sense but it also kind of makes sense that if we're <laughs> i mean that's how, that's what controls the seasons right it's the tilting of the earth so you're saying if we all run out and buy electric cars we're not going to save the earth no okay i watched a good clip was that with you where the guy was saying uh i might i might have just watched it yesterday when i was laying around feeling sorry for myself for my kidney hurting but uh he was basically asking if they had the, or he was asking Budigig if he had the uh, infrastructure to support, like the guy had all the math. So he was like, well, let's say if it's by 2030, do we have the infrastructure to support every family having one car? And then he was laying out that one car is, what, over time is... 25 percent i don't want to get it wrong but it basically it, it costs more to charge one car than basically running air conditioner and your refrigerator right. oh, you, you know what i mean he was just highlighting right. Right, right so he was like so are we going to have brownouts rollouts has anybody thought about this and of course you know he get gave the political answer which i mean he's a transportation guy so he's probably not as read into the power grid as the uh, the guy or gal in charge of power anybody in his cabinet is a clueless moron so but anyways i don't know if they're clueless morons i i told you this yesterday they know exactly what they're doing 
That's they may true. portray themselves as clueless. Or they may come across as clueless because they don't want to answer the question truthfully and honestly. That's true. So it may be deceptive, not fully truthful, not thinking clearly, not laying out a plan. Because, like, that guy, it's probably like me and you, is if they can lay out a plan and show that, hey, we figured out a way to produce electricity, blah, 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 and it's cleaner. Because like, most of us aren't like, I don't want to be, you know, no one's anti you know, clean energy, people are, I don't want to rely on clean energy if we don't have the capacity, the infrastructure, the ability to produce it. Which we clearly So, like, you're don't. putting the cart before the horse. That's all. That's what they're doing. And it's just that simple right now. And, you know, until they come out and say, hey, we've figured this out. Yeah, and you can charge your electric car from the coal-fired power plant. Yeah. It makes you feel so much better about yourself. Yeah, well, it'll take more... We just don't have the capacity to produce the amount of electricity that they want us to use by their whole agenda 2030. So this one was at the car wash. But anyway, I just want to make that clear. that, that yeah. it was, It's a theory that over thousands of years, not year to year, but anyway. Right. So that's car wash yesterday. I saw this. Um, so I'll put this up as like another meme, but this bumper sticker on it. It's on a Range Rover. It says, politicians are starved for power. Please don't feed the animals. I sent that to you. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we got a, where are we at? California education. This is funny, too. It's another meme, but. So California. Well, that's not a meme. It's a tweet. Tweet of information, yes. How did you know? Oh, because it said, yeah, never mind. The blue check mark. Yeah. Not familiar with the tweeting. So, uh, California had the worst, longest school closures. 50% of students don't meet English, state English standards. Only 40% are proficient in math. They're 50th of 50 on literacy. Yet, Gavin Newsom flies to Washington to get an award for uh, transformative improvements to education. It's obscene. Facts. Mother freaking waste of space. Uh, yeah. Like, how could you accept an award when you're last in the country for literacy and education award? And just let's put it out there. I didn't check to see if those exact facts were true. It was a tweet. I saw it. So maybe they're not. But I bet they're not very good. And they're already talking about trying to mask their kids again. Because at the end of the day, they really don't give a crap about your kids. They only care about power and telling you what to do. Um, like telling you to get underneath your desk. Yes. To survive a nuclear holocaust. Yes. Like just get you practicing fear, that fear of possible death at any moment. Yeah. The fear, wearing a mask, whatever. Yeah. Got some more Newsome stuff. So here we go. This will get you fired up. Not as much as Swiss cheese, but Newsome back plan will now require California well owners to pay the state to pump their own water. So, so like, this has got to be a – so that's a policy that men and women should rise up and be like, it's my water, it's my land, it's the power that I'm paying for. This just shows the third world. I'm getting taxed on that electricity, right? Because it's not just electricity usage. You get all kinds of yeah. sub breakdowns, I'm sure, even in California. Tell me where in the Constitution you're allowed to do any of this. That's not even like a... I mean, this is beyond obscene. And this is, once again, why everyone's leaving California. Not everyone, but they have the highest number of people leaving their state. And then he goes to try to trash places like Florida who have the most increase of residents to their state because people want to live free and not under dictatorship of this jackass. But, uh, so yeah, under the authority of the California. So you pay to have the well dug. Yes. You pay for all the equipment to pump it up out of said well into your own house. And yet state of California thinks you owe them money for it. Yeah. Do they not have mineral rights in California. Uh, you're going to put a fee. So you're going to have to have a meter on your water, and they're going to charge you by how much you're taking out. Uh, 
Yeah, see, I would move out of California, or I would sue them and be like, "What? Where is this legal?" Exactly. That's like going and saying they're going to take over my house because they want to put a road through here, and they may never even put a road through here. But it's eminent like domain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eminent domain. It's another garbage. Yeah, but this one's where like this is, California can't collect rainwater; it's illegal. We were talking about that because I, yep. I was saying I should put up some rain barrels. Yep. And uh, this is what a great rack. The government provides no service, no support, no product, doesn't even do the billing. And that's all in a citizen. All the government does is cash the check. Yeah, so that's totally not what it is to be an American, number one. So that doesn't even sound like an American state. It's not. Like, that's so it's anti. Not. Freedom right there. Keep in mind, California is their little... Lake. So you're being punished because the city hasn't branched out far enough to run water to you. So you have to dig for your own water. So California is saying they own the water, basically, that you're using. Yeah. How else are they going right. to charge you for this? Yeah. <laughs> and, and this what, is what they, they want all the states people to people to, like... Vote this guy out or... Vote know, them all out. Yeah, Well, yeah, exactly. The, the representatives shouldn't be allowing this. They should laugh. I'm sure some of them are, are like, of fighting course. it. But, but, I mean, you know, and you keep thinking there's some hope for California. I mean, I've seen a lot of recall elections on uh, school board members, uh, attorney general, or uh, district attorneys and stuff like that because of their ridiculous... Leftist. Leftist mentality and rule of law and whatever but that's not a rule of law that's a rule of government this government is communism everything this is communism 100 percent. when are they going to come and tell me that I, I can't be retired and i need to start a career as x y or z that's when you know we're at full-blown communism is when they start telling us what our jobs are going to be yep we're getting there maybe they already did it maybe this is where you're assigned to this you took the asvab test or the you know you take all those tests in school yeah, subconsciously it leads you down a road to. But again, you know, hopefully it pushes you to what you want to do that's fun and challenging. But but hey, I mean, you know, we're only once. That's a slippery slope argument. I got it. But if they're starting to charge you for your own water that you own on your land, yeah. Apparently, we don't really own the land. Otherwise, I wouldn't be paying taxes and have deeds. Yeah. So this guy can't uh, keep you safe. You don't wear flashy jewelry in L.A. But uh, he's going to and he's going to charge you for your own water. So yep. drive. Go buy you a, a horrible car. So don't go buy a, a Tesla. No. You want to drive something. You want to get you like a 1989 Ford Taurus or something. Yeah. Like Rusted paint. Uh, do they have Tauruses in '89? Yeah, you know, like an old Plymouth Omni. Remember those little yellow? Well, usually yellow is what I remember. But you know, little four cylinder probably gets thirty miles a gallon back then. That's what you need. So that way you don't get robbed and don't wear a watch or anything. You don't want to do that. And then basically, you need to put on some gray or brown, like a pantsuit with a matching T-shirt, maybe some flip flops. Government issued flip flops. Yeah. So pretty much you have more rights as a prisoner in California than as a resident. I don't know how many. I mean, I know why they do because it's beautiful out there, but I, I wouldn't. Wouldn't. Yeah. The people should be at the state house protesting and dumping water on the ground. <laughs> oh my God. Probably get arrested for it. Yeah. Can't have a plastic straw out there. Bad for sea turtles. Did you show the picture of the the uh, paper straw inside the plastic wrapper <laughs> on a Capri Sun? No, but I saw it. Did you send it to me? Somewhere? I don't know. I saw it somewhere, but it was like the <laughs> ultimate in ridiculousness. Yep. Yep. Like wake up people on a, you know, like another wake Cardboard up. Cardboard straw the- in a freaking plastic wrapper. Yet, you let people like this run anything. Yeah. They've never... I've never understood how, like, people like him and 
I don't know, Lori Lightfoot, how like they get elected. Yeah. Or reelected. You know, I can understand maybe the first time you get elected, but uh, how do you get reelected? So there's so Chicago is a freaking war zone, basically, with violence and everything. And uh, St. Louis, St. Louis, but she can't. Detroit. She can't fix it, right? It's take your gun. It's the strictest, mm-hmm. strictest city in the country with guns, besides maybe California. Uh, but now she's worried about trying to make sure that the, the uh, Chicago Bears don't leave. Chicago. Yeah, it was like millions, if not, was it billions? Billions. Yeah, it was yeah. Like two billion, wasn't it? That was 2.2. Yep. So she's going to focus on that because we can't have the bears leaving. Well, you got to keep the masses entertained with the circus, right? That's true. That's Which true. I don't necessarily agree with that because, like you were saying the other day, every once in a while, taking three hours to just forget about everything oh, yeah. and sit down and watch, you know, peak athletes perform against each other. Why is the government anywhere paying for any of these things? This is a, they're private organizations. That'd be like, you know, Steve, I really want you to keep this house here. So I'm gonna don't move. I'm gonna pay you for that. Yeah, where's that out for me? I need that. I need that bell out. The NFL is like they make billions of dollars or whatever. And they're a nonprofit. And a nonprofit. Yet cities will pay for them to stay in their city. Well, I mean, Florida has shown the way to do that. Get involved outside of your scope of, like, you're an entertainment company, and now you want to, you know, like Florida, didn't he turn down somebody was wanting something for one of their athletic teams, and he was like, no. Oh, yeah, Tampa Bay. Yeah, was it Tampa Bay or somebody? I can't remember. We talked about it, I think, maybe a month ago or so. That was uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Race, yeah, there was something. I mean, he did it to Disney too. I mean, he took yeah. away their. Well, okay. they were self-governing. How the hell does that happen? Uh, was it like they're like Washington D.C. Right, <laughs> Disney World's its own entity up there with London and D.C. and the Vatican and, and then s- Disney World and Disney World. <laughs> yeah, have you seen how many people have been arrested at Disney World for sex trafficking and stuff? Employees, I've seen yeah. many, 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 many. Hmm, maybe this is why they shouldn't self-govern. Just saying. So there's this National Guard story. Can't imagine how this could go wrong. Actually, Don Bullock shared this. And uh, COVID vaccine mandates from the Biden administration may cripple the National Guard. Uh, you know, for decades, the National Guard has served as a backbone of saving Americans across the country in times of crisis, whether it's uh, coordinated hurricane responses, training of allies abroad. Uh, responding to domestic civil unrest, wildfires, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They, you know, National Guard does that stuff. But, uh, you know, basically if you don't get vaccinated, they're going to, so uh, to date, approximately 60,000 National Guard uh, and Reserve members remain unvaccinated. And the pending decision from the Biden administration could punish the very service that uh, these members are providing to us to, you know, and they've also been the frontline people of this pandemic. But so, I mean, there's been a few court rulings where they've ruled that they're yeah, I think it's that, unlawful to kick them out for that. I think the Air Force. I saw one though; they were gonna like withhold pay or something on them, whatever. And and then uh, and then it says currently every branch of the U.S. military is struggling mightily to recruit men and women to join in its ranks. This year is uh, shaping up to be one of the worst recruiting years since Vietnam. You mean, hey, I'll just tell you this much. There is a story about a colonel at West Point that was chastising people who were vaccine hesitant. Not she wasn't trying to sit down and read with them pros and cons, risks, benefits, whatever. She was chastising them. And so when, uh, you know, the military called to want to talk to Zeta. She was like, yeah, right. Like, you know, yeah. And, you know, Zeta grew up around me and my, like we did everything together. Like she went everywhere with me. They even at my retirement announced her as my wife. And then I got an audible gasp from the audience because they all thought I was married to a 15 year old. That was your daughter. 
even the general looked at me when he was handing me whatever. And I'm like, this is my daughter, obviously. Like, what the heck is wrong with you people? Did you say, I'm from Texas, not Alabama? No. I just was like, this is the proper, this is why I'm retiring is garbage like this. You know what I mean? Because you turn in and you say, this is who will be on stage with me because Nikki has already moved up here and was working. And so it was just me and Zeta. And so Zeta and her friend came with me and her friend didn't go up on stage. But so, I, you know, I mean, I went and I, I you have to turn it in like there's a, like a data sheet and they still got it wrong. And it was embarrassing. And that was my final goodbye in the military was them doing that. So. Between that kind of stuff, that colonel chastising people and reminding me of exactly the hypocrisy that can occur at premier institutions that should be above and be better than that, no, not getting my my seal of approval for my daughter, not at this point. I hear you. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell has been moved to a Florida prison. Supposedly it's known for painting and music, this prison. So it's a minimum. we got to make her comfortable, right? I mean, she just trafficked in minor children to who knows who. Herself. So, uh, yeah, so she's going to be in uh, Tallahassee, a low-security prison. And someone's like, hmm, is it so she can escape or is it so you can easily kill her? <laughs> I mean, Epstein killed him. I mean, Epstein didn't hang himself, so, you know. But, uh, or is this the payoff for, like, just give us a few people. I mean, this is enough that everybody in America should be like, this is seriously bad. Look at who all he's connected with and look at all the things that they're connected with and ask yourself, why won't they release this list? Why aren't other people being held to account? Yeah. Why wasn't R. Kelly on it? Epstein's list, so he didn't have to go to jail. Yes. <laughs> Which, I mean, be, throw him in jail for the rest of his life, I don't care. It's where he belongs, but just the point is the double standard. So is the double standard we took the one black guy that was sex trafficking off the streets and we left all the white people out? Or is that what the moral of the story is? I don't know. The moral of the story is is more information should be demanded of our... I mean, the DOJ leaks everything, right? In the past, it's just been a constant thing, and uh, it depends on this, it depends though. on who you are if they're going to leak it. That's true. A lot of names on that list that wouldn't be good, and that's obviously on both sides of the aisle. But like, that just makes me angry. Like, you should... can't you can't sit there and defend anybody in the criminal justice system that says that they. You know what I mean? It's like you're part of a system that's allowing this to happen that's not holding people to account for something serious. This should piss off every American in this country. Yeah, knowing that who knows who, but we know how connected. I mean, Bill Gates' wife has said she didn't like his relationship with him, so if he's right. connected, who else is connected? Let's just use that. Right. Bill Clinton has allegedly been on that flight many times. That one reporter from ABC said she had the story, you know, when – when the, her story broke, that she had it three years earlier, and the news suppressed it. Yeah, this woman gets 20 years for sex trafficking to nobody, apparently. It's kind of like the guy from CNN that was on a Zoom call, was caught pleasuring himself, and he's still on the news insulting and putting people down, and it's like, dude, you were, you're an idiot moron, and there's, like, What? How is this guy even on TV still? I get it. You need to forgive so people, important. but like this guy, I have like anything he says, everybody should laugh at and be like, whatever. Why is he on my news? And they should never watch that channel again. Yeah. Tubin or whatever his name is. Wasn't that his name? Yeah, I know. I don't remember the name, but I know. Like there's no allegedly with that. There's, uh, I mean, there's stories out there on that, but that's what he did. And he's not the only one. Other people, have, you know on those zoom calls when all that thing went down. Well, wasn't like, there like three or four people from CNN are arrested for sex crimes and different things. Yeah. The same people like, like reporting. The, yes. And... Reporting the stories. 
and they I don't were know if involved. Those reporters, but I think it was producers. Right, but like, yeah, the, they're that responsible. Set up the story. Yes, <laughs> yes. But you have people like well, that guy is... should not like have a voice anymore. Like, sorry, man. Like, maybe ten years from now, you go get some help, whatever. You start your way off at some backwoods channel that no one's Wasn't ever that... heard of, and you go and you do your penance for your crime. Which... Wasn't it the Brian? Was it Brian Williams? Lied about stuff, got caught. He was off the air for quite a while, and he came back. And I was just lying about a story. Yeah, he was saying he was shot at in the yes. helicopter. Yes, which, I mean, for me, that's enough to be like, yeah, you're never coming on the news again. You can't trust the damn thing you say. Yeah, I mean, I... But this guy, what he did... Well, that so for Brian Williams, I get it. He embellished the story, but a lot of times when you're flying in on helicopters, they deploy those flares... Right. Because they pick up a heat sim- signature somewhere, and right. like that's what it does. So, I, you know, I got it. He's embellishing the story, right. and it makes it sound cooler. That's different than having this camera on and pleasuring yourself while other people are talking and you're on camera. Like you got a you got an issue there that you can't wait until your meeting's over with. I mean, it's a disgusting topic to talk about, but I'm saying this because that guy is literally still reporting the news on that channel. And he's got a serious moral compass issue, or at least a freaking technology issue that he can't turn off his video screen. You know, so that's one thing. Doing it while you're in a meeting is weird. Right? Like, there's some deviancy there of some kind. Lack of control. I get it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, do your penance. But, like, if the guy didn't... He's going on and he's insulting people. And it's kind of like, first off, man, I can't take you seriously. No. Uh, yeah. So, uh... We all make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always room to come back. But, like, this guy, not in the sense of any moral high ground on any topic at this point in your career. You'd be like, I couldn't imagine showing your face ever again. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't, I would disappear from public life forever and be shamed because, you know, whatever, but you get my point. Like that's one of the reasons why I'm like, I don't like, why would you even watch CNN knowing that they don't even care? It is known as the Clinton news or network fits right into that whole thing. White House goes into full spin mode uh, ahead of its economic report that will be coming out. Disputes the definition of recession. Luckily, I covered that on the show three or four weeks ago. I defined it two quarters in a row. That's so if you've noticed. I mean, that was the definite. Remember, I I researched that. Just like medical stuff. I took it from two or three different websites before I settled on defining recession. when they call, I might even have the piece of paper around here where I wrote it out. Just like when I call COVID a disease. It's not a freaking disease. It's a virus. A disease is cancer. Like, so this is what we do. We suck so bad or really. We have a, we have a short-term memory. They're so good at what they're doing. Yeah, right they, now. They, they, they give you some shiny things over here. And then you're like, wait, I thought three weeks ago. Right. You said a recession was this. Nah, no, you're crazy. No. That's... We'll just change the definition so it fits. So that generally speaking, that's what we look to. But then we have to do some holistic approach. That's what they call it, a holistic evaluation. So if... that was not the definition I gave that I looked up across the Internet three weeks Listen, ago. If you honestly believe this White House... And if you believe this story when it comes out and they're like, well, no, it's not really a recession. And if you really believe this, you are an effing moron. No, you're not a moron. You but... are effing stupid. No, if you're a person, if you are a citizen of this country and believe that, you're stupid. No, it, it shows that they're they're not stupid. They don't – people are attached to the Democrat Party no matter what. And so – it's not because they're stupid. It's a psychological thing. They they can't accept it. It's not because they're then a you're moron. you're brainwashed. Yes. That would be a better term for it is that they're, they're myopic and they can't see But how do they get so mistakes? brainwashed? Because the news, man. Turn the news off. 
Like I've been saying this since I was 13 years come old. Come on. They you changed can ask the Grandma definition? Susie that when I was like 12 or 13, I would try to tell her to stop watching ABC News. Like like cuz I caught them like they're, they're it's they they're not consistent with anything that they say and they don't own up to anything. I just don't like me earlier saying, "Hey, I looked it up and I don't want it to be misconstrued. It's a theory that over thousands of years the sun causes it. Right. It's not that NASA didn't give credit for the half degree Celsius increase this year over the last 20 years to that. Right. So I corrected it. I was wrong. I, I, or I didn't exactly say it as it should have been. And even still, I would look it up just – I mean, you can go and actually like 30 different fact-checker sites are out there saying it. So it also lets me know that it's probably closer to the truth just from my own – just if Snopes is saying things the like that. The more fact-checks you get, the more accurate the story really is. Right. I've seen them like five fact-checks on something Biden did, and I'm like, five. So you know like, okay, that story is like – or almost 100 so like accurate, if you right? don't just read the so a lot of times people will read like the first couple sentences or even the headline of a fact yep. check but if you read the entire thing it'll say like it it, it admits the the meme was right or whatever right. just, and it'll say you know. but it was on February 13th yes. not February 12th it yes. wasn't a weekend it was on a weekday and that's where they like they get you as mostly true it's like mostly true, but they're liars because they had their date wrong. Like that's a, you know, I'm given a kind of a broad thing, but it's something generally stupid like that in the sense of the date's wrong or they'll change the, you know, they'll put like a semicolon to show that it's a different thought. or You know what I mean? Like they do something to try to make it seem as not as bad as it is, but it's mostly true because... But they'll put, like, mostly false it's because the date was wrong or because he didn't say it at the U.N., he said it at the WHO. You know what I mean? Like, they'll get you on some little technicality like that. So was that's, why 9 I, that's why I say allegedly and everything all the time is because you can fact check me and I'll be wrong about some little penny-ass detail, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, the broader scope of what I'm generally saying is Keep in mind, probably correct. Under oath. They had to admit in court that those fact checkers are nothing but opinions. Yeah, they're hired opinions to influence yes. people. Yeah, they're like op-ed pieces. If there's any justice in this world, they would just be like, you know what? Nope. Facebook, you're done. We're shutting you down. We're shutting all this garbage down because this whole biased, unbiased, we want to get you the real information. Yeah, right. No, they they want to control what we think. Exactly. And what we can say. And then so then you stop acknowledging the truth and you accept the false reality that they're presenting to you. It's classic 1984. True. Did you see the meat? Well, I, didn't, I don't think I showed you, but there was a woman in on a train or subway reading 1984 while she was wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your sign. Uh, so uh, CNN reporter leaves the White House COVID coordinator stumbling for – when he was confronted over Kamala. So the uh, CNN reporter grilled the White House code response coordinator, Dr. Uh, 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 Azish Jaha, on Friday over Vice President Harris skirting the CDC guidelines on COVID-19 exposure. So what she did was, so after announcing that Joe Biden had COVID and obviously she was in contact, close contact with him, um, the guidelines from the Center of Disease control and prevention advise someone that's deemed close contact to wear a f well-fitting mask uh, around others for 10 days um, but uh, Harris didn't instead she removed her mask and hugged uh, uh, yeah Bingham uh, Alabama mayor Randall uh, Woodfin on Friday during an event in DC and she also spoke without a mask and it's funny because it's there's the rules for the elite people, and then there's the rules for the peasants. In 1918, when pictures were published of the quote-unquote ruling class not wearing their gauze around their face because they didn't really have, like, face masks like we do or, you know, however, whatever mask they were wearing, the rest of society was like, if you're not doing it, I'm not doing it. Where have all those men and women gone that are like, you're not even doing it yourself, so I'm out, man. Like, but, like, sheeps. 
I don't understand. She, if they're not doing it, I'm not doing it. If and that's the what CDC and the certain and the Congress is not mandated to get something, I'm not getting it. When you have it's people. that simple. It's just that simple. If you're not going to do it and you're elected and you're making these rules up, you're the one that's making these rules up, but you're not following them, I'm not doing them. That's classic 101. If you want me to do what you're doing, you better do it. That's like if you want people to do a certain thing, you best be doing it yourself. That's rule number one. And if you're not, don't expect me to do it. Don't try to talk to me about it. Don't give me an excuse of why this one time you didn't do it. No. The rest of the time, I don't have to do it because if it was that important, you would have done it every single time because cameras are watching you. We know everything that you do or say. So it's that simple. Like, there's no argument to that. Like, you can't tell me that I'm wrong if you want to tell me that uh, I'm wrong. You're wrong. You don't understand how life works. You don't understand how, quote, unquote, a leader is. If you want me to do something and you want me to follow you, you better do it. Don't tell me to do it. You do it. Because when I'm a leader and I make a mistake, everybody in my organization is now allowed to make the same mistake. Yeah. Because I can't hold them to account if I'm not being held to account. It's just how life is. Yeah. And then when you have people from the CDC, the FDC, uh, the... And they're not mandated to get it. But they're all, like, you have many of them quitting. Yeah, that's a mass exodus, according to the yes. articles that we talked about the other day. Because it's all been politicized, and they're saying that we're being lied to. Like, at what point, and it's funny, like the Red Sox game last night, how many more people I'm seeing wear a mask. At what point are you finally going to be like, hmm, this whole thing's been a lie? Not all of it, of course, but a lot of it. I don't necessarily know that it's a lie. It's, well, I mean, didn't Dr. Burke say that her and Fauci manipulated some stuff? I believe so. There's also an email from Fauci saying that masks don't work. And yeah, to his friends that they got in the FOIA, it was more like, yeah, yeah. don't worry about wearing a mask. Doesn't Something help. along those lines. Yeah. yeah. But you're crazy for saying that. That's true. Probably get banned for saying it. Yeah, what a shame. All right. Last story. Bail reform. Uh, saw this graph the other day. This is for uh, city of Rochester, Monroe County. It was New York. Um, so obviously, we've had so many stories from New York City to Philadelphia to everywhere. This bail reform. You know, you go, you commit a crime, and there's, you just get out. Just like, yeah, let's go, whatever. You've got 165 pounds of meth. No worries. See ya. You, you tried to get on stage and stab somebody running for governor? No problem. Nah. Well, Don't do it again. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, Bubba. Try to stab uh, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, he's black. It's not a hate crime because nice nah, he's nice. Nah, really white because he doesn't. He, he doesn't tell right. jokes that we approve of. Yeah. So <laughs> he's kind of a white black man. So that, that's different. That's kind of like Clarence Thomas. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so. So anyway, this is chart. I'll try. To, I'll put the chart up, and I don't know how it will look on the screen, but it just starts from 2001 and goes across. So the red is shooting victims, and then the blue is bookings, and then this big old yellow line is uh, bail reform begin uh, to be implemented in the last quarter, so the end of so the fall of 2019, and you can see that, and then from there it's skyrocketed to 419 shooting victims. Yet, for some reason, the bookings has dropped down to 35, 16 from consistently being like in the 13,000s and then like the 11,000s. And as soon as the bail reform, right around the bail reform, it just it tanks from 86, 34. So what's the to, end goal of bail reform? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends which side you, if you believe in laws and all that. Well, here's my thing. Like I, I'm good with bell reform because you have yeah, yeah people, you have people busted with some ma marijuana that are yeah, sitting in some, jail. In some or, states, like, right. nothing would happen to them, and in other states, they're in jail for ten years, right? For you know having probably right. less than what people have in their homes in like New York or Colorado, right? So I, I get that. I'm all about that, but right. not for violent crimes, right? Bell reform purpose. Let's just see what we get. Just see what comes up. 
Eliminate the practice of money bail. Bail reform legislation has promised to eliminate the practice of money bail, requiring counties to develop pretrial services agencies and so-called risk assessment tools or tech analysis to determine which criminal defendants pose a threat to public safety or at risk. So it's so another case of giving them an inch and them taking a mile, right? So, like, that makes sense if because it goes back to what we're talking about. If it's not a threat to safety, you know, they're not out selling 175 pounds of... 65. Or, or sorry. Of meth. Of meth. Got to make sure we get it right. <laughs> then... That would, to me, would seem like, well, we're going to go ahead and have to charge you some money to make sure that if you have that much now, how much more are you going to have access to when you leave here to start making up that loss of profit we just stole from you? Yeah. All right, so so the I'm okay with, all right, let's stop setting bail at, you know, $100,000 for somebody having whatever. Right. You know. Or, or a drug act that got busted with, uh, you know, a couple grams or something or whatever, like – yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying put up posters encouraging drug use, like New York City. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A little call back to yeah. a month ago's yeah. story, but what I'm saying is, is yeah, okay. Like this guy's not going to go hurt somebody unless right. he's selling it, right? Because then maybe all right. But there's different things. Like if they're applying some type of logic and reason, but if you're not setting cash bell for a gentleman that got up on stage with a knife. Yeah, there should be no bail. You're just remanded until trial. Yeah, we need to, like, find out what's going on with you and why. You, you know what I mean? Like, that guy's a threat. Yeah. Yeah. So, perfect. So, anyway, I, I'm, you know, so, so everybody who thinks we're a bunch of jack wagons, no, I, I, I agree that there's probably well, some reform needed, but this chart shows violent crimes, right? Is that what that is? Or shooting victims? Shooting victims. And then... And this is bookings. Like bookings for everything or yes. violent crime bookings? So you, that's why you got to be careful when you look at these kinds of charts. But it just as bookings anyway, in general. Yeah, but, you know, you can manipulate the data. But Yeah. So bookings have gone down, but violent crime has gone up, or shooting crime has gone up. So then you got to ask yourself, all right, that's Almost a big. doubled. Yeah, so that's. But we went from an average of close, between 13. Well, that's in Rochester, right? The, the city. Yeah. So well, we went from thirteen to fourteen thousand on average for a long span of time, to now in twenty twenty one down to thirty five sixteen for bookings. Well, see, that's that's okay if those thirty five sixteen bookings are for violent crimes or, you know, something similar. Right. I, I guess you'd have to detail exactly Which, what your reform is going to be if it's this amount of less of recreational drugs. Which I'm sure they have that, but again. If I live and I'm like, Tim shot me, and then they arrest you, and you're like, ah, he was getting on my nerves, whatever, I didn't want him. And then they're like, all right, well, hey, don't do it again. We're going to release you. you got a court date here in about three months. But act right, Tim. Yeah. I, I, that's weird to me. Yeah. So there's, there's a local story. This is a few years ago, but because – a lot of times people want to blame the police. Police aren't doing their job. Well, you'll actually find it's not that case. In some cases, of course, there's always an exception. There's always, you know, there's always that Uvalde, Texas Police Department, you know. But uh, so the police would book somebody for whatever. They're out on the street before they blink. And, I mean, oftentimes they're arrested twice the same day for different crimes because so there's just this woman who was out on bail, $500 bail. Sometimes. And, I wouldn't say oftentimes, but sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. So there's this woman. She's out on bail for some sort of drug thing. Uh, $500 bail. It's okay, whatever. It seemed like the first thing she did wasn't, you know, horrible. It wasn't violent crime. Then... While she's out on bail, she robs, like, an 80-year-old woman at a Market Basket parking lot, gets arrested, goes back to the same judge who, once again, releases her on $500 bail. So she commits another crime while out on bail, which should revoke her bail, which should have sent her to jail. And she uses the thing, well, I was scared because my drug dealer, like, threatened me. I have to give him the money. So robbing the little 80-year-old lady was... Apparently, in that judge's eyes, is an acceptable thing. 
to then release this woman. And this is the local story. So you can only imagine on a grand scale of different places and different crimes. And But the problem is many times the police are doing their jobs, but the judges are not doing their jobs. Because their job is to promote the law. You know, it's just not happening. Yeah, it's crazy. So I can't imagine the frustration as a police officer because it's like, yep, yeah, I just arrested this person, but... I can't imagine the family him. and that 80-year-old victim. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be mad at the police, the judge, the town, yep. my fellow citizens that are allowing this to happen. Yeah. If you want to talk term limits, maybe judges should have some sort of uh, oversight every year or something that... Yeah. I wonder if they have their finances pooled and examined like I did when there was a contract up for bid. Probably not. But you would think that would be something that's like, hey... I mean, if they can pull up my ring video and give it to the cops without asking me. So, you know, I got to get rid of my ring now. I saw how they've given it over to cops 11 times. It's funny. Apple wouldn't do that, though. And people are mad at Apple because it was a crime that's been, I don't even remember what it was. It was a few years ago. And they refused to give it up because of privacy stuff. And people are mad. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what, though? If they refuse to give up that because they need to keep the trust of their customers. Amazon, I guess, doesn't care about that. Amazon, okay. Apple was one that, I don't know. I don't know if they still do. It's been a few years, so probably not. But, uh, yeah. It's one thing if I'm like, hey, I have it on my video. Right. Rings have been great, or these things have been great because crimes be committed and, and someone would have it. And then call up the you know, officer, hey, you know, that shooting you had yesterday, I've got a Well, brain. you know, I read a story, I don't know, a year or two ago where somebody was riding their bicycle where a crime was committed, but they were able to get their unique identifying cell phone thing, and so they were harassed by the cops, and they were just riding their bike. But the cops were able to get their information from the phone company because it pinged off of the Wi-Fi or whatever at the house when they were riding their bicycle by. And that, you know, that guy or gal, I can't remember, but it was a suspect that was treated poorly by the cops when they were just out riding their bicycle. I'm suspect of this whole technology thing, but after seeing that yesterday with a ring, I'm going to redo my security system that doesn't involve any uh, any type of, you know, which I don't have any Alexa in my house, and every once in a while... My phone will say, oh, speak to talk. And I'm like, why is this feature on? And so then I got to go back through and try to turn off everything. I don't like that. I have nothing to hide, but also, like, why do you need to be monitoring my stuff anyway? Yeah, but just because. That's not freedom. Like, knowing that somebody's going to look over you, like, that's. But a lot of people like that. Like, well, if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. But don't you understand about this, like, privacy and it's not your damn business? Yeah. You know, it's not because you want to hide something. It's just it's none of your business. Like, there needs to be an Internet Bill of Rights that addresses, like we talk about all the time, reading a 75-page term of agreement. And it's like, I just wanted to buy a camera that right stares at my driveway and turns on a light and lets anybody know that they're being watched. Right. Not that it's subject to... Not that, like... Whatever. The cops can be like, well, where was Steve at? Let's ask Ring if they have him walking around his house. So we can see if he was at his house. Like, why do you... Like, just come and ask me. Well, I used to be innocent until proven guilty. Now it's guilty until you can prove yourself innocent, it seems, in many cases. It seems like it's going that way. Which, you know, I'm not a anti-technology. I'm anti, like... Stay yeah, I'm business. sure they'll say, well, you know, on page 65 of your terms of agreement, we said that if the cops subpoena this, then we will freely and gladly hand it over and not tell you about it. I just find that that's not trustworthy on Amazon's part. Right. And any of the other, because it wasn't just Amazon. That was the one that they highlighted. They said there's other companies that do that. So I don't know which ones, but you know, 11 times doesn't seem... You know, it's not that many times, and who knows what it, the reason was for, because I, I, whatever I read, and I, I didn't see what those 11 cases were. But now, that's coming out here in the next few days. Get some other money that I didn't have 
project a, you know, as I say, I'm on a budget <laughs> so I don't have to come out of retirement. Yeah. So yeah. careful if you have those uh, systems in place that, you know, they have access and they'll give it away without letting you know. Yeah, they don't care. Some people, should, everybody should care. Everybody should care, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Yeah, they interviewed two different people on the, I watched a New York City interview or somebody over there were asking them about it. And they're like, one person was like, that's BS. And somebody else was like, I don't care. I don't have anything to hide. Like, you should care. Because they should come and ask you if you have this footage and then get the footage from with your permission because it's your equipment on your house. It's the way I look at it. But I'm sure in the terms of service, it probably says you're leasing this equipment Right, even though you bought it. Even though you bought it and paid money for it, and you pay a service, well, however much I, I pay to be able to log on and see it. That guy sold that business to Amazon for a billion dollars. Yeah, that's what usually what happens. Good like That him. guy probably started off with good intentions, which I know he did, yep. and then now it's being used by Big Brother. So that's just a start. So they're admitting to 11, but at what point is it, Stephen, where are you going? You are not authorized to leave your house because of your social media content. <laughs> yep. All right. Pause. You don't get to travel on the airlines or rails because you did not. You know they do that in China with their social credit system. Oh, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, people are marching right into their own entrapment. Gladly. And just if they pay attention to history, how many times you have to see it? Well, you don't have to pay attention to history. You can look at this recent example of them using your equipment. And, you know, and it may not even have been against the 11 homeowners. It could have been something going on across the street, whatever, to see if... Listen, uh, if you, after today's show, if you still have faith in our government that they are looking out for your best interest... Then there's no hope for you because it doesn't even have to be the show. Just the last California's going to charge you for your own water you took out with your own electricity, your own well, your own freaking pump, everything, everything that you paid, for. everything you paid for. They're going to charge you because they apparently own that water. So yeah. there's a long history of California and water rights and the the bamboozle that it is. Certain families control. Like because I said, of how they wrote it. You need to get that bar wall up. On I think that's true. Or it could have been the plot line of a, a a law series that I watched on Amazon, but I'm pretty sure it was based on fact. No, this is what I'm telling you. I said this last week. This is what needs to happen. Mexico, Texas, you get the wall up. Arizona, wall. You get to California, you turn, you run right up the Nevada line, you just fence off California and all the illegals can have California. Newsom can be his own little king of all this and they can play around and have all the fun they want with this system they got going and we all can sit back and watch it crash and burn as it is slowly. And that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. You can have California. We will give California back to Mexico. It's not even it that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the uh, Democrat leadership in California. Yeah. It has nothing to do with illegals. It has everything to do with Gavin Newsom and his brand of Oh, yeah. I'm tyranny. just saying that. if Let him be tyrannical over non-American citizens. Yeah. And, and they can show us even better how well they rule and everything. With all the illegals, they're, they obviously want to come into the country because there's just open borders. So those 3 million people plus that keep flowing in, California can deal with them all. We'll fence it off. There you go. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. Yeah, I don't really agree, but all right. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll sit here and argue back and forth for 20 minutes, but I get it. I mean, you're kind of being like, I got it. You're just you're saying it's ridiculous enough to where something needs to be done to get that state back under somewhat i mean we don't live there so it doesn't really affect us in the sense of our day-to-day -day lives but their policies trickle out as but is that leave. but that is the the training ground for the democrat party or the leftists to california 
I mean, that is the prime example of everything they run because the state's run by Democrats. It has been say the same years. with New York. New York's pretty, and Illinois. I mean, there's some some bad states like Illinois. Yeah. California is the worst out of them all because of the other infringements on your rights. Pay for your water that you you don't own. Apparently, they're just they take the ridiculousness that step further. Crime wise, yeah, I agree 100 percent that the rules in those states are just similar to California. You know, they're all like that, but. Uh, California just takes everything a step further. Everything causes cancer in California. Everything is, like, California has been the downfall of this country for 30, 40 years now. You can't have a vented gas jug because of California. Is that why? Yeah, because California thought the vapors were bad for the environment or something. So now your your fuel just has to, like, glug out because you can't have a vent in it. Yep. I remember the old gas cans. You pop the little thing on the back, pours yep. out smoothly. Yep. Now I have like a can't do that little Dangerous. trigger that I have to like snap in at the same time. Let's Trying to like scramble five gallons of gas <laughs> yeah. and yeah, thank California for that. Thank you, California. Thank you. All right, pause the meeting of the day. We'll wrap this up. Uh, John F. Kennedy. Every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. So we're deciding to try to fix this collision course that we're on in this country. And get back on track. Yeah, remember that freedom allowed us to... And freedom wasn't free? No, it was not. And now we're getting Isn't that a away. South Park song? Freedom isn't free, yeah, I think it is. Something like that. Maybe. Yeah, the South Park or it's Or it's a country western song. Country western? What the hell calls a country western? Country? Country music? Country Western like back in the 30s, 40s, 50s? <laughs> it's Country Western. That, that's not what it's called? Isn't it the music genre? No, it's called Country. Uh, that's you millennials being lazy with your language. No. Yeah. Country Western. Freedom isn't free. I was just looking to see if a South Park song would come up. I don't think so. Eh. Country Western. That's like square dancing and stuff. Oh, freemium isn't free. Dang. You blew that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, we don't see you around town. We will uh, talk to you tomorrow.